20 mistakes noobs make and don't starve together. This video goes over mistakes that noobs make that cause players to die earlier than they would want to. Number one, not making armor or making ineffective armor. Most noobs just plain won't make any armor ever and instead opt to wear clothing items such as sandy restoring items or thermal gear. Both of those are very poor choices of gear to wear as most of the damage that players take will be physical damage. That even includes damage from shadow creatures or from darkness. Almost everything is counted as physical damage with only a few exceptions, such as cold, overheating, or hunger damage from when your hunger goes below zero. The easiest solution to this is just to make a football helmet using one pigskin and one rope and just wear it basically all the time. The only time you wouldn't want to wear it is when you swap for an umbrella to avoid heavy rain in spring. The football helmet is one of the best armor choices because it goes in the head slot, which is basically useless except for armor, and it's cheap to make and protects from 80% of damage. Noobs that do make armor usually decide to make a grass or log suit, which are terrible options because they're expensive, and go in the chest slot. The chest slot has other uses, unlike the head slot, such as for backpacks, or for the extremely useful amulets, such as the Mad Luminescence, which lets you run faster. Now, noobs may struggle to gather pigskin, so let's cover that too. Simply find a pig house and smash it with a hammer, preferably if it's in an area that you won't go back to. If you're in late game, you should build a few pig houses nearby to your base, then feed the pigs for monster meat when you see them to turn them into were pigs and kill them. That way you get a guaranteed pig skin instead of a 25% chance and you'll always get two big meat. Number two, this ties right into number one and making thermal gear. Things like catcoon caps, beefalo hats, puffy and breezy vests are all incredibly inefficient in early game. All you need to survive is a thermal stone and a torch to burn trees with. Here's the catch though. You need a little trick that most people don't know about with the thermal stone. So most people will leave their base or their fire when the thermal stone turns orange, thinking that that's maxed out, which is pretty foolish because thermal stones are a pretty tricky item. And they show as orange when 30 degrees above ambient temperature, which has nothing to do with what your max temperature is. And in winter, it's really, really cold for it to be orange. You should wait until you start to overheat and the edges of your screen turn orange before you leave with your thermal stone and then go. It's possible to start barely overheating with just one fire if you max it out, but it takes a really long time. So I recommend that you get two fires and then you just max them both out, or you can just light a couple trees on fire that are close by, whatever works for you. And number three, this one's very similar to number one and it's not making strong weapons. Don't Starve's name is kind of a misnomer, so you don't need to worry about food too much. There's an abundance of it actually. But what is actually dangerous are the monsters and these are what most people die to. Most monsters deal over 30 damage and some of it as much as a hundred in a single hit. But the actual danger when you have armor is just being overrun. It's not a good idea to fight 30 spiders at once or 30 small monkeys or 30 frogs. If they get a few hits on you, they could stun lock you in place and just continue to wail on you until you die. That's why you need a strong weapon as soon as possible to take care of these issues before they come about. So say for instance, you have a level three spider den that you need to get rid of. You can go ahead and take it out and not have to worry about it. My go-to is the hand bat. It costs two twigs to build, a pigskin, and two big meat. It has infinite durability and deals 59.5 damage a hit right after you make it, although it will spoil over time, and as it spoils, it deals less damage. You do need an alchemy engine to make this, so keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that that is 75% more damage than the spear's 34 damage that it starts off with, which makes a huge difference, and which is why I say the only reason you should make a spear is if you're going to make an ice staff. Number four building farms. Every time I see someone build a farm, I just stop and I gotta wonder why. Farms are one of, if not the worst food source in the entire game. And here's why. They're simply too slow. They produce too little food for their build cost and require too much maintenance. Many players will say they are good due to dragon fruit, which can make dragon pies. Dragon pies certainly do look good on paper, healing 40 HP and 75 hunger. It's really one of the strongest items in the game for food. 
but that's a mere pittance for how long it takes to make one. I could also say that mandrake soup is one of the best food items in the game, but you really shouldn't make that either just because it's using up an item you shouldn't really ever make into that. Here's why. So first, you need to plant seeds in hopes of the 5% chance to get a dragon fruit. Then you gotta use that fruit to get more dragon fruit seeds from birds. You can assume approximately half of all the dragon fruit you have will go straight to your bird for seeds for the rest of the time. Each one of these planting cycles takes approximately two and a half days to grow and can't be done in winter. And then they can also be sped up with fertilizer, but that's a waste of time to go gather. And on top of all that, the plots themselves are really expensive, costing 10 grass, 6 manure, and 4 rocks to build an approved farm, which is considerably more efficient than basic farms, even though it's still terrible. Instead, you could go and just base in a place where there's already ample food. For instance, the desert already has cactus in it, which then you can use two monster meat, turn one monster meat into an egg at a bird cage, and then put two cactus in the crock pot to get a pierogi, which will heal you 40 HP and 37 and a half hunger. And it's just a lot easier to make and mass farm. And in that time, you're saving a whole bunch of time because those improved farms take so long to make. And if hunger is really an issue, what you wanna do is instead of building that one improved farm, you'd probably get a good 15 berry bushes dug up and moved to your base and fertilized in the time it takes you to make one improved farm. So just go ahead and move berry bushes if you need more hunger. And number five, building base as soon as possible. The issue with a base is that it ties you down. If you build it too early, as most noobs do, you'll barely get to explore anything. If you build a base too early, it will be in a poor location also, and you won't even know what else there is around the world. You may not know that the Pig King is on the opposite corner of the map. If you ever need gold, it'll take an entire day to go over there. And you may not know that there are two great wormholes next to each other somewhere. Overall, it's just not a great idea and it really slows you down. Number six, clicking on everything. And this one's PC only. But noobs don't know that the keyboard can be used to basically do everything in the game. And in certain situations, it's significantly better. Spacebar picks up the closest item. F attacks the closest hostile enemy. Control plus F attacks the closest mob that isn't allied to you. And Alt plus F just attacks the closest mob, including allies. You'll mostly notice this when trying to attack small and fast moving mobs, such as butterflies. And you can also swap gear by having it in the first inventory spots and hitting the corresponding number key. That isn't to say clicking is completely useless, not at all. Clicking to move at certain times can take a more efficient route than using WASD, which only allows movement in eight directions. Moving with the mouse can also allow the character to path to the next opening on land, which can be incredibly useful for things like exploring the ruins, where there are huge gaps in the void, and it can be hard to tell which direction to go. And number seven, not fighting. Fighting enemies is a great way to gather certain resources. Most new players will drag hostile enemies to neutral mobs to kill them, such as beefalo, which in certain situations can be a great strategy, but not all the time. The player is one of the strongest mobs in the entire game and has one of the highest DPS of any single mob in the game. A fully upgraded WX-78 with enough full sight crowns to cover his HP bar effectively has 4,000 HP, and that's without taking into account the invincibility. A full mighty Wolfgang with a Dark Sword can deal just over 300 damage per second, which is the highest out of any mob in the game. With that said, in most situations, it is faster to just kill the threat yourself than it is to lure mobs over to deal with them for you. And of course, there are always a couple exceptions to this. Number eight, not using Sandy harming items and mechanics. This includes things like blue caps, wormholes, dark swords, and other magical items. These Sandy harming items and mechanics are some of the most useful in the game. And if a player doesn't use them, it will greatly slow down the run. New players want to keep their Sandy high because Sandy is scary. And I really don't blame them because it gives you all this random visual stuff, but there's just better methods here. Some players will say to use those Sandy harming items and just maintain Sandy with things like cooked green caps, an even better method than that too. Using and abusing all Sandy harming items, you can easily kill shadow creatures without any issues and simply ignore your Sandy level. If you become sane, good, perfectly fine. If you're insane, that's okay, I can deal with the shadow creatures I'm strong enough because I have these magical items. I mean, after all, who cares about sanity when you can abuse magical items that heal the most, armor that gives you the complete invulnerability and the strongest weapon in the game? Number nine, leaving screen shake and lag compensation on. And I'm, I'm really not certain why these are on by default. They're really obnoxious. 
So first off, screen shake causes your screen to shake when a large enemy is walking nearby, such as a giant, and when things like earthquakes happen. It makes it hard to see where you're going and makes it easier for the enemy to hit you. It will also cause your screen to shake while insane, which is incredibly annoying. Second off, lag compensation compensates for lag by showing your character somewhere it's not, but where they would be if you had no latency lag. This means you never know where your character actually is and you'll get hit very easily by monsters and your hits won't register on enemies because your character isn't actually where you think they are when you're starting to attack. I've repeatedly gotten comments on this that I'm cheating when I easily dodge shadow creatures and deer clops hits. These commenters simply just don't understand how much the default settings hurt them and really I don't know why Klee just leaves these as the default settings, they're really obnoxious. Number 10, using mods as a crutch and world settings. Most new players will use mods as a crutch for their poor skill level or world settings. Whether this be an overpowered character mod, a mod that allows them to wear armor in a backpack at the same time, or just turning hound attacks to less, you're simply making the game less challenging than it's supposed to be and slowing down the learning experience, while also removing the feeling of accomplishment when you actually survive. Don't Starve is fun because of how dangerous and difficult it is for a new player. Without the ever looming death around the corner, there's no risk and no reward to go with that risk. Also, most of the time I see players doing this, they say they're quality of life mods that very clearly aren't. They'll say things like enemy health are quality of life, and it's like, what are you talking about? Just don't use mods and avoid this altogether. You're going to learn much faster without them. Number 11, being afraid of the caves. The caves actually have all the strongest items in the game. For starters, they have lanterns, which are amazing, and there's no danger to go get a lantern. Further than that, there are the ruins, with many new magical staves, amulets, the strongest helmet in the game, a boss, and also significantly stronger dangers to go along with all those much stronger items. However, the most efficient strategy in the entire game, Ruins Rushing, revolves completely around this area, and the best players can clear out the ruins by day 10 in every run because you can easily take care of the dangers using blue mushrooms, football helmets, and a handbag. So if you have those, you can simply go ahead, run in there, kill the things, grab the loot you want and leave. Number 12, staying too close to base at all times. Every time I join a full public server, I see at least three people base sitting all day. These noobs are the reason for the entire team dying in the end. You shouldn't sit at base even at night. The way to overcome don't starve dangers is to act constantly. Going to base should be a momentary pause to grab food, store items, grab items, maybe prototype something new, and then get back to it. Use a torch or lantern to also work throughout the night to gather as many resources as possible. And number 13, using slow methods to gather resources. This is a very general one. What it boils down to is when you're doing something, quickly think about if there's a faster way to do this. I get at least 10 comments a day telling me stone fruit is a godsend and all I can possibly think about these people is that they aren't right in the head. Spending five days at absolute minimum to get a food source that is significantly worse than the food sources on land, such as lichen, cactus, berry bushes, ice, and monster meat. Another one, people start chopping down trees right off the bat. Sure, you do need four logs for a science machine. I'll give you that one. But after that, just hammer down pig or bunnyman houses to gather boards directly. Number 14, not hitting the like button. Can you imagine that some people actually don't hit the like button? and most aren't even subscribed. You only have to hit that one once. Easy peasy guys, go ahead and hit that right now. Number 15, cooking blue mushrooms. If you ever wanted to summon me to come slap food out of your hands and tell you off, this is the way. Blue caps heal 20 health and 12.5 hunger and hurt your sanity 15 when you eat them. Cooked blue caps hurt your health three, don't affect hunger and heal sanity 10. Eating these, you heal such an absurd amount that you don't even need sanity, and it's a huge waste to cook them in any circumstance. So what I would recommend is just make certain you have your football helmet and your hand bat, and then you use these to heal if the shadow creatures hit you, and then you just kill the shadow creatures to get your sanity back up to that point where it's kind of teetering in between sanity and insanity. Number 16, not using non-renewable resources. Other DST content creators will normally tell you you need to avoid doing things like this, like the plague. What if you play the world for a couple thousand days? They're absolutely insane. For starters, break pig houses with a hammer and dig up blue mushrooms for health. There are plenty of pig houses around the world and hundreds of blue mushrooms. 
Use them. You need them badly in early game, and in late game, you'll have better ways to gather healing, such as pierogi, and you can set up pigskins farms. 17. Using walls for protection. Walls are horrible for protection. Enemies break them super easily, they have barely any health, and the best way to protect yourself is just a good weapon and armor. And for stationary defenses, you can use tooth traps, they work. Also, keep in mind, there are extremely few enemies that can attack your base off screen. Most enemies need to be nearby to a player to be able to do anything, otherwise they're just frozen in time. Which reinforces just gathering a weapon and armor. Notable exceptions for that are deer clops, barger, and lure plants, you gotta watch out for those. But walls aren't going to help you with those. And so with that too, I do have to say that walls are still useful for a couple things. So you will want to use them for penning in certain animals and making certain mob farms. They're just not useful for protecting your base. 18. Leaving useless structures at base. Once you have an alchemy engine, you don't need the science machine. Hammer it for more resources in space. Once you have a shadow manipulator, you don't need a press to hatitator. Hammer it for more resources in space. And then you'll have more space, more resources, fun time. 19. Letting deer clops run away. This is a little bit more of an advanced one than just your typical noob is going to run into, but deer clops is an easy boss dropping an incredibly strong item, the deer clops eyeball, which allows you to make an eyebrella, a head-worn umbrella that gives you 100% immunity to rain, which is a huge problem to combat in spring. Otherwise, you're gonna freeze, won't be able to hold onto a weapon, and your fire will be weaker, so it won't even save you. And then your other option than that, than just freezing to death, you can make an umbrella and wear your helmet at all times, but then you don't even have a primary slot, so you're gonna be in a really bad situation. It's not a fun time. You won't be able to fight any enemies. You could get frog rain at the same time. It puts you in a really bad situation and not have the umbrella. Number 20, not going to the caves in summer. The caves in DST have lower ambient temperature than the surface and you will not overheat down there. You also won't stand by your base, causing it to spontaneously combust and wither. Basically, you won't have to build an ice flingomatic or any thermal gear or an endothermic fire because the area is just straight up not loaded in. And as long as you stay in the caves, you're not gonna overheat. So you save a ton of time and you can just go around the caves normally. And that is all for this video. If you liked the video, leave a like and I'll send you your very own Don't Starve Noob to beat into shape. Want to see more like this? Subscribe for more.